You know, here's the thing about camera lenses. Basically, due to the laws of physics, the perfect lens does not ex- <gasps> What is this? <gasps> this is the brand new Tamron 35-150 f2-2.8. to What? This might just be the lens to replace like half your camera bag, although it is a quite chunky boy. I mean, is this the perfect lens? Let's get into it. Now, lenses, especially full frame lenses, have basically come in a pretty standard set of zoom ranges, the holy trinity, if you will. Partially because it's what we're used to, partially because of physics, and we don't wanna walk around with a bazooka strapped on our shoulder. But now we have this very interesting lens, kind of a 35 prime, a mid-range zoom, and a shorter telephoto, all wrapped into one nice chunky package. <laughs> chunky package, oh gosh. But in all honesty, this could potentially replace a 35 prime, a 24 to 70, and a 70 to 200, perhaps? But is it any good? Let's find out. Okay, a quick disclaimer. Tamron did send me this lens to try out for a couple of weeks. I have been testing it, but they have no say in what I say, and they do not get to see this video before you do. Okay, so first things first, this does have a variable aperture of f2 to f2.8. So it does not maintain the same aperture all the way through. So we start out at f2 from 35 millimeters all the way up to 40 millimeters. From 40 millimeters to 60 millimeters, we go to f2.2. And then from 60 mil to 80 mil, we have 2.5. And then from the rest away from 80 mil to 150, we are at f2.8. So honestly, pretty solid low light performance, pretty nice bokeh all the way through. Next, let's talk build quality. Now, as I mentioned off the top, this thing is beefy, but beefy in a pretty good way. The build quality is actually quite exceptional, not what you're used to seeing from some of the cheaper Tamron zooms. This definitely has more the feel of like a Sigma art lens in both build quality and kind of heaviness as well. The lens comes in at 1165 grams, which makes it just heavier than the new Sony 70 to 200 G Master and just lighter than the old version. Uh, so it's a roughly the same weight as like the Sigma 35 F 1.2 uh, and it is slightly more heavy than the Sony 24 to 70 G Master. It certainly has some heft to it, but it does balance fairly nicely on the newer Sony bodies, and it does fit into my wandered camera bag when attached to my A1. Unlike some of the other Tamron lenses, it does have an 82 millimeter thread on the front, which I personally like since most of my other lenses are that as well. And they've also done a nice new back cap, which is a much smaller profile. I personally find that to be nice as well. Some other nice to haves, we have three easy to access function buttons that can be programmed with a locking switch on the side that keeps the lens from sliding, an AF MF switch, which I personally find to be a non-negotiable, and this new custom switch, which can be programmed on the Tamron lens utility app on your computer. So you can do things like customize the function buttons, customize the focus wheel, etc. There was really solid weather sealing throughout the lens and a nice gasket on the mounting point. So you can feel pretty confident in light rain or dust, provided you're not going out to Burning Man and partying your face off for a week. So what about autofocus? Now on the photo side of things, I found things to be quite snappy and pretty accurate. I never really had any issue where we missed focus or there was focus hunting or anything of that nature. The tap to focus and the eye auto tracking worked very, very well. And even when testing in lower light situations, I didn't have a problem getting focus. Side note, while we're talking about autofocus, I actually found the manual focus function to be quite nice as well. It is pretty dang close to linear. So when you're turning, it is actually turning the exact same amount each time. Some slight downsides with respect to the focusing, there is this very slight pulse when you press the focusing button. It doesn't really affect the performance. I found that it is still quite snappy, but this is certainly something to keep in mind. Another downside is the minimum focusing distance. This is certainly not a macro lens. And while it's not really billed as a macro lens, you just can't really get all that close to it. And when you compare it to something like the 35 G Master, where you can get actually quite close to the thing that you're focusing on and get a lot of nice background separation. Despite it being F2, you can't get all that close to your subject. So if getting all up close and personal with macro is something that's for you, then this lens is not for you. On the video side, I would say the autofocus actually works even better than it does on photo. All the tracking functionality works great. The eye autofocus works fantastic. The tap to focus works great. The rack focus is perfect. I really had no issues with it whatsoever. 
There's also very minimal to no focus breathing, which is a huge, huge win in my opinion. I'm shooting this video and all of my videos on the 35G Master, and it focus breathes like an anxious person waiting to fly that has no booze around. You'll notice here as I shift my face back and forward, you can see the edges of the screen move quite a bit. It's something that we're really hoping and praying Sony can put out the firmware update to fix. Please, I know you can do it. Just do it. But yeah, no issues with that focus breathing on the Tamron, which we like. The focus motors are also super quiet, so you will never really have any issue if you're doing video with this lens. Okay, so let's talk the optics on this beast. From a bokeh perspective, it's decent. We have nine blades of rounded aperture, and it's good, not great. In the real world, it's gonna look pretty fine, but if you were really to peep in on those bokeh balls, you might see a little bit of onion ring, but it's not something like the 11 bladed, bladed rounded aperture that you would get on a G Master lens. From a sharpness perspective, I tested it against the 35 G Master, the 16 to 35 G Master, 24 to 70 G Master, and it's certainly not a prime lens, but it did perform quite well. I'd probably rank it from top to bottom of those lenses, I would say 35 G Master at the top, 16 to 35 G Master second, the Tamron third, and then the Tamron outperforms the 24 to 70 G Master. Okay, now before we go any further, I wanted to remind you that we are on a quest to grow the squad to 10,000 subscribers. And unfortunately, as much as it seems like you guys love watching my videos, I have one of the worst subscriber to non-subscriber ratios on all of YouTube. So let's go ahead and solve that by clicking subscribe if you have not already. Okay, so let's talk price. At $1,899 US, this is decidedly one of the most expensive lenses that Tamron has released, but it also has a lot of the premium functionality. It has a pretty premium lens quality. And if we also consider the fact that this is replacing two, maybe three lenses in your bag, it actually does kind of warrant that price tag. Okay, so who should buy this lens? Well, honestly, just about everybody. As I mentioned, this is actually one of the perfect lenses. Let's say you're a travel photographer and want to keep the number of lenses or your kit light, this could serve you for pretty much everything. Maybe you're a wedding or portrait photographer. Sick. Ditch that leather double holster strap, double camera situation, and just get this one lens. And it has you covered from a 35 prime all the way up to a shorter telephoto. And you can get really nice background separation and low light performance all the way throughout. Or maybe you're into landscape photography. Again, if you want to minimize your kit, you have just this lens and just a wide angle lens, and you could be covered from say 16 to 105 in just two lenses, which is also pretty sick. Okay, so maybe you're into sports. All right, if you're into sports, you probably need something a little bit longer, but if you're doing courtside sports like basketball or something like that, perhaps this one could definitely do the trick because you don't need quite as much range. At this point, I've honestly tried a ton of lenses. And if I were to start over my personal kit from scratch, I would build out the following three. I would go the 16 to 35 G Master for all of my wide angle shots. I'd go the 100 to 400 for all of my telephoto and compression shots. And then I'd get this one lens for everything in between. Hopefully this made your purchasing consideration a little bit easier. If it did, play thumb with a like button. And you might also like this one next. See you in the next one.